Welcome back. So we had just gone over a lot of the concepts for setting up cameras and how you can do it via the room editor, but now we're going to do it programmatically. All right, so now I'm going to untick visible and also untick enable viewports, and I'm going to get rid of the object following the player. And we will also do the same in the start room. Basically, we're setting everything back to default so that we know that the system we set up in a moment is actually working when we run it. All right, now I'm going to close out of these and we're going to come back to the general workspace. And I'm going to create a new object called OBJ camera. And this is the object that is controlling the camera in the game. And this is an object that I want to be in all of the rooms because at the start of every room, kind of like how we would have to do manually, it's going to set up all of the camera and viewport settings for us. So to do that, we are going to make this a persistent object similar to our game object that persists for the entire game. And before we forget, let's just add it to the start, just like the OBJ game object. And we can put it wherever we want because it doesn't matter where this goes. It's a controller object, but of course, convention is to just put it at zero, zero. All right, so now the camera is in there. It's not doing anything at the moment though. So now, what we'll do first is set up the actual camera itself. So the equivalent to messing around in the settings that we just did. But let's think about what event to put it in. So if we put it in the create event, then our code, all of our setup is only going to run when this object gets created, which is not ideal because this is a persistent object. It only gets made once, so it's not gonna do it in all the rooms. We could have this be not a persistent object and we could have the OBJ game object instead spawn the camera in all the rooms, but we might as well just put it in the room start event right here, which is going to run at the start of every room. And that's perfect. So it can do the setup for the camera in here. And if we want, we can actually add a description for that right here. And that is going to appear here in the event description so that we can see what that event is actually doing. It's not necessary to do that, but it can be nice and helpful to remind you of what you've been doing. All right, so now we're gonna to need to set up some variables for the camera and the viewport or the display. So we're gonna need a camera X and Y, and I'm gonna set that to be just zero, zero for now. And now we also are going to set up a target. And this is going to be the object that the camera follows. Potentially, you could change this in different rooms. You might want the camera to follow something else during a cutscene, so potentially this could be manipulated during the game. All right, now we need the camera's width and height, and I'm gonna keep this at 500 for both of them. You can change this if you like. You could set it, for example, to be something in a 16 by nine ratio, which is what most games are these days. That's the same ratio as most modern monitors. And now for the display, I'm actually going to make it a factor of the camera. So I'm gonna have a scaling factor, so display scale, and I'm gonna set this at two for now. And I want the actual game window to be whatever the scale is times the camera width. And that's gonna guarantee that we always have a nice perfectly scaled ratio. So let's go display width equals the camera width times the display scale. At the moment, of course, these values are going to be exactly the same, but if you've got different ones, it is important that you keep the width and height separate. All right, great. So we've got all of our variables set up, but we haven't actually changed anything about the game itself. We haven't applied any of these to the actual settings. So what we're going to do is use some functions to change the display. So first of all, we're going to go window set size. And this will change the actual window, which is kind of like what the viewport was of the game. So this is going to set the game to our display width and height. So that's it for the display. Now for the camera, we need to put a few things. So we'll put view enabled equals true, which is kind of like when we ticked before that we were going to be using views. So this is it doing it programmatically. And now we want to set one of those views to be visible. So we can set using this right here, any of the number of views to be visible. And since it doesn't really matter, we can just use the first one, which is view zero. And we just set that to true. So that's setting that one to be visible. Now we can change the 
size of the camera. Now, we also have to pick what camera that we're going to be using. We'll just use the default one. So view camera zero. And we want to change this camera to be the same width and height that we've set up here. That should have set up the camera and viewport. There is one other factor we need to change, and that's the surface of the game, which is kind of like the canvas that everything is being drawn on. So by default, we have what's called an application surface, and that's what everything draws to during its draw events. And we haven't actually changed that to match the size of our display. So we are going to need to set that as well. So surface resize application surface display width display height. All right. Now you'll notice when I run the game, the window kind of gets shoved down into the window a little bit and I have to keep moving it up into the center of the screen. And that's because the window is kind of being resized from a smaller place that it was here and just kind of stretching it down this way, which makes it kind of go off screen. So we can actually do this with a function called window center. But since a lot of these camera transformations only get finished after this step is actually run, we have to actually wait to the next step, the next frame in the game to actually run this. So to do this, we can actually use an alarm, which we can set to go off after a certain number of frames. And this is just going to center the window. So let's set that alarm to go off and we can set it in here. So alarm zero, we set, we use alarm zero. Let's just set that to go off after one frame. So now when we run the game, it should move it into the center for us. Okay, excellent. All right. Now the next thing that we have to do is actually get the camera following the player. We've set all of this up, but we need to actually change the X and Y of the camera. So to do this, we are going to want to do this in the step event. Now, so we're gonna get the camera to follow the target. So we are going to save camera X and technically we don't need to save this into a variable, but Later on, we are going to refer to this when we're spawning objects to actually get where the camera is. So we are going to set camera X equal to the target dot X. Now this isn't going to work perfectly, but let's leave it at this for now so that we can actually see how this works. So we've set the variables and now we are going to use a function to set the position of the camera with the camera set view position. So we're setting the position of the camera. So the first argument it is asking for is what camera are we setting? And remember, we're using just the first camera. So view camera zero. And now what X position and Y position? Well, camera X and camera Y. Let's give that a run. Now we are getting an error saying unable to find any instance for OBJ ship. So right here, we set target to be the ship. So then why can't we access it? Surely it should be alive in the game. But remember, this object is running at the start of the game as well, and there's no ship in this room. We would also run into this in the game room when the player gets destroyed. So what we have to do is actually be careful that we are checking if the target exists. So we're gonna check if instance exists, target, only then do we want to try and access it. Let's try that again. Hmm. So up here is the actual player ship. So we are following it, but it is following it anchored to the top left. And that's just how cameras work. So they're actually anchored to the top left. To get the behavior that we actually want, we want to shift the camera over by half of its width and half of its height, and then it will be in the center. So we need to subtract the camera width, or rather half of it, and subtract half of the camera height. All right, let's try that. 
There we go. And now we are getting the desired behavior that we want. And now, did you catch that? So that kind of flicker as we were moving over the screen. And that's actually because our room wrapping code is still working. And when we get to the actual edge, it does a weird jump to the other side of the room. Now, I do actually want to keep the room wrapping behavior. So to give a visual indication to the player as to when we have reached the end of the room, I'm going to kind of clamp the camera so that if we're at the edge, the camera won't move over the edge. So after setting the camera to this position, I'm going to clamp it between two values. So we can see right here that this function takes in a value, a minimum and a maximum. So the value is just going to be camera X. And then the minimum value is going to be zero because that is the total left side of the room. Now for the maximum value, you might think that we could put room width, but remember the camera is anchored on its left side. So we actually need to subtract camera width from it so that the edge of the camera never goes beyond the room width minus its height. And we need to do the same for the Y value. So camera Y equals clamp, camera Y, zero, room height minus camera height. All right, perfect. Now, if you run that again, and we head over to the edge of the room, you can see it kind of doesn't move when we're at the edges. So we actually do know when we're reaching an edge. All right, perfect. So that's our camera set up. Now, before we move on, one more thing that I want to fix up is the fact that we are no longer displaying the lives and score correctly. And that's because the game object is drawing that in the game room itself. So it's actually drawing these values at 2020 in the game room. We can actually use a different event to draw this. So if we just right click, change event, draw, and use the draw GUI instead, the graphical user interface it stands for, it's gonna draw it to a special kind of layer that isn't relative to the room. It's relative to the actual display itself. So now if you run this, you can already see that something's a little bit wonky. It's drawing it very small, but if we hit enter, you can see at least that it is displaying it correctly. It's in the top left. Now, the reason that the size is off is because kind of like the application surface, the graphical user interface also needs to be resized. So if you come back down to the camera, let's go display set, and it's come up here, GUI size. And now to get it, not scaled up to the size of the display to get it to the actual game width and height, then we want to set it to the camera's width and height. So we want to set that to camera width and camera height. All right. And now when we run that again, we are getting the proper display of all of our text. Perfect. All right, so we're going to leave it there for this tutorial. In the next one, we're going to adjust how our objects are spawning so that we can get them spawning relative to the camera. I'll see you there.